to me the epitome of the Divine Mother. And I, I resisted her for so many years. I mean, the vision of her that I grew up with was so distorted from the reality of her. I don't know if you grew up with this, but in my religion that I grew up with, they always called her the Virgin. You know, it wasn't Mary, it was Virgin Mary. <laughs> and the statues of her were very flat-chested, you know. They took away all her femininity and her womanhood. And she was always very sad on the statues. I went to a hospital to visit someone one day. The, house, the name of the hospital was Our Lady of the Sorrowful Mother. And I thought, ooh, you know, why, why do we emphasize the sadness and the sacrifice and the suffering? And not somebody you'd want to invite to a party, you know what I mean? And she was always sort of pictured as being very pious and holier than now. And then we were supposed to model our lives after her. Would you want to model your life? after a pious, holier-than-thou virgin? I don't think so. I resisted her for years. And then when I grew up here, she was this perfect mother, and we were supposed to be perfect like her. Oh, my. Anybody here? Were you a perfect mother? Any of you, please. If there is one, please leave so the rest of us can feel good about ourselves. <laughs> So perfect the image. I didn't really get Mary until I had an experience of her, which I've shared with you before, so I won't go into. But it was totally the opposite. It was joyous and free and like it chills. Just thinking of what she was really like when I experienced her. Totally the opposite. Love, joy, peace, grace. And of course the reason that 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 image of her was put on us is, you know, way back when the patriarchal leadership took over politically from the matriarchal leadership, they had to suppress the divine feminine. They had to make her that way. And unfortunately, when they suppressed Mary, they suppressed the creativity in all of us. Men, women, it doesn't matter. That whole creative nature was suppressed. And from the Dark Ages, those medieval times, to the Renaissance, it was about freeing the divine feminine. And I think that, you know, back in the Renaissance when so many of the wonderful, wonderful artists were gay men, I think that was the only safe way it was to express the divine feminine and how beautifully they came to express, to lead the way for safety to be that divine feminine. Goddess worship was forbidden, and from Eve to Mary, Eve was the symbol of the evil woman temptress. And Mary, they had stripped of her femininity, of her real power. Now, in spite of that, my own mother, you know, seeing her picture was wonderful this morning, my own mother was so devoted to Mary. You know, I think in that stifling environment, the mother was still the only one that women felt comfortable turning to. And she prayed to Mary all the time. And actually, the rosary and Mother Mary is still my go-to when things really get desperate. And I don't know why I wait until things become desperate before going to her. But praying in that power of the Divine Feminine is a wonderful, beautiful way, and it works, and it's powerful, her presence. Now, I, I grew up in the Midwest, and, you know, many people honored Mary. I grew up in a sort of German Catholic community. And I don't know, Michael never heard of this before, but everybody had took oval bathtubs and buried them in their backyard and put her statue in to make a shrine. Some of you get this. Did, did you all get the, the shrines made? I always wondered what Mother Mary thought looking on earth with her statue in all these bathtubs in people's backyards, you know. But they were very devoted to Mary. Uh, someday I want to see a statue of her where she's dancing and free and smiling and dancing and her skirts are flowing and she's full figured. And the veil is optional, divine if you want one, but you don't need to hide the divine feminine. That's what I want to see someday, a statue where she's dancing beautifully. Well, the buried prayer in Scripture is, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. She's that part of us 
that expresses the joy, the love, the creativity of the divine. She dances within us, wanting to express. Metaphysically in us is our soul that believes in the so-called miraculous as a possibility. After all, in the birth of Christ, the, the, is where we get the quote, with God all things are possible. That's that Mary energy willing to birth the Christ. Creativity begins with faith, and I think that's why my mother turned to Mary so much. That energy of faith in the creative process to manifest on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever idea, whatever passion or creativity we want to be expressed. That feminine, receptive aspect of our soul that receives from spirit into matter. And she birthed the Christ. Look at all the expressions of the Christ right here in this room that have been birthed. All the diversity, all the many ways that Christ is expressed on earth. Now creativity is our passion, wherever we feel passion. That's our creativity desiring to come through. And I'm not talking about the ego wanting this and wanting that. I'm talking about that deep divine passion desiring to be expressed in some wondrous way. You know, I grew up, the word passion was, was sort of looked down on as a bad word. It was suppressed. And yet uh, Greg Levoy, a wonderful author who wrote a book called Callings, you know, when we all receive a calling to do whatever. He said, passion is the smelling salts of the soul. <laughs> the smelling salts, that which makes you perk right up and be energized. Yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, that's mine. Mine to do. Whatever that deep desire of your heart is. And he said, by ignoring our passions, we dam up our energies and cut ourselves off from a vigorous source of callings. And rather than demonstrating our passions in this world, passions become needs. And if these needs are not met, they become symptoms of one sort or another. And we go into dysfunction. Thomas More also wrote very similar in Care of the Soul. Repression of the life force is the most common reason that he sees people in therapy. It stops the flow of the spiritual life force when we repress that. And so often a soul that is in pain is simply longing to express in some creative way that that has been suppressed. That's why in, you know, in communist countries or in any countries where the leadership is controlling, the first thing they do is stop the arts because the creative the divine feminine expresses to the arts, through dance, through creativity. And when I lived in Cedar Rapids, they had a Czech museum here. Anybody here Czechoslovakian? Oh, oh, oh you are. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, they have a wonderful, if you ever get to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, they have a wonderful Czechoslovakian museum. And they had an, an art exhibit one time. And this isn't from there, but I'm giving you the idea. All the art was in a, a three, eight by eight inch square Block. No, I don't think this is exactly 8 by 8. But the reason they put all the art for that exhibit that day in this size, they wanted to show how in their country, when their creative nature was suppressed, that it was like it had to fit into this little box that someone put them in. And so all the art. And it was such a moving exhibit to imagine that anything you would want to express creatively had to go into a box. It was, it was very moving to see that. Well, Mary is outside the box. <laughs> Matthew Fox said, if you get cut off from your passion, then where's your compassion going to come from? If you block that flow, you can't even be compassionate. Everything's blocked up. Now, it took me a long time in my life to find my passion, to find my calling. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to draw. You know, art is part of 
creativity, but I wasn't very good at it. And I always drew the same thing. Every picture was the same. I lived on a farm, so I drew a farm. It had a barn there and a house there. And my sister taught me how to draw chickens, so there were chickens all over. <laughs> and I drew the same picture over and over and over again, because that was as far as my creativity went. And then when I grew up, I took a class on acrylic painting, and I started painting. And I wasn't that good at it either because I wasn't free enough. I mean, you really have to free yourself. To, all my paintings were sort of compressed, waiting to be free. But I did like to talk. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, they used to say, Anne Marie, you talk too much. Will you shut up for a while? <laughs> and I love to tell my family now I'm being paid to talk. <laughs> See, when you finally find your niche, you fit in. You fit in. But Mary loves to express through music and art and dance. And I know I've shared with you before my favorite story about the man who went to Japan and they were giving him a tour of all the temples and museums. And he kept asking them, but I want to know your dogma. I want to know your theology. And finally the man got really frustrated and looked at him and said, we have no theology, no dogma. We just dance. And I thought, yeah. Let's worship the divine feminine way. We just dance. We just allow spirit to flow in whatever way spirit wants to take us. Well, last week we talked about uh, the pictures of Mary that I grew up with. Always had the sacred heart, which was a heart that was pierced with usually a thorns or some sort of a sword. But metaphysically, that sword is any thought, word, or action that finally opens the heart. And yes, sometimes you have to feel that pain, that hurt that made it close in the first place, whether it was criticism or whatever, to close. That, that has to be pierced so that that flow can come out again. And do you remember what we called it? Yeah. Excalibur! <laughs> I just brought this to see if you remember. <laughs> just a little side trip there. Sometimes I just have fun with myself. But <laughs> now, you, your, your creativity can be suppressed through criticism. It can be ridiculed. You, you can resist it yourself, but that flow can never be stopped. It's always there, no matter how repressed you may have been. And I found some great stories of people that had had their creativity suppressed and yet still went on to do something great. Do you know that Bob Dylan when he was in high school in a talent show, got booed off the stage. Can you imagine Bob Dylan? Walt Disney went bankrupt, had a nervous breakdown, but look what he did. Sir Walter Raleigh wrote the history of the world. Now I always thought it was Mel Brooks, but he, he wrote that during a 13-year imprisonment. Can you imagine? Martin Luther translated the Bible while enduring confinement in the castle of Wartburg. He did it there. Dante wrote the Divine Comedy. Why they called that a comedy, I'll never know. While under sentence of death during a 20-year exile. And he wrote about that hellacious state of mind when that creativity is stopped. Helen Keller was not able to hear or see during her whole lifetime. Yet she became a famous author and worldwide celebrity for her charm and her wisdom. Talk about the Divine Feminine. In the book of The Heavens Declare by Alice Howell, she said, creativity moves through us. It's a divine process. It doesn't come out of us, our ego. It moves through us, spirit, coming in and moving through as the divine. Native cultures do a lot of drumming to open up the heart. Maybe that's why Michael loves drumming. <laughs> and he definitely has perfect example of how the divine feminine, that creative nature is in all of us, man, woman, it doesn't matter. His mother was very creative and, and uh, did creative things with her children all the time and their whole family is very creative because of that. Well, I don't know if any of you have studied heart math, the intelligence of the heart. It's a wonderful organization that brings you to your heart. And they remind us that the great world teachers, all the world teachers, have said that God's will is found in the chambers of the heart, the kingdom of God within. 
And in Heart Math, they go on to explain, as you learn to go into your heart, you discover God's will and your inner will, your higher will, and you gain your freedom. As you listen to your heart directives daily, you can assume the power to manifest them. Because if it's a divine idea, all that is needed is there to achieve it. But if you ignore your heart, you remain bound in the limits of the third dimension, creating stress for yourself. If you just hear your heart directives without acting on them, you remain caught in the continual struggle of the lower fourth dimension. So follow your heart. That means following your spirit, allowing yourself the gift of moving on to that higher awareness. And that takes freedom. And that takes receptivity and non-resistance. Being in the flow. That takes calling on Mother Mary by whatever name you call that divine feminine. Asking her for help. Don't do like me and wait till you're desperate. <laughs> you call on her all the time. And if she were here today, I got to thinking as I was preparing this, what would she want to say to you all if she were here today? And these are the words that came to me. My presence lies within all of you. I'm here to help you to open to your joy and laughter, to that feminine side of you, that creative part of you that yearns to be free, to create, to explore. But you can't connect with me if you see me as some pious, holier-than-thou virgin in a bathtub in your backyard. <laughs> Call on me. I'm here for you. So let's take a moment to close our eyes and connect deep down within to that presence of love, that joy, that free spirit that is desiring to move in and through us as our creative, as our expanding nature. Free to dance, free to express, free to live our lives in whatever way Spirit would have us live it today. It's a moment of surrender. It's a moment of letting go of any fear or doubt or restriction. And simply going forth with joy. Being grateful for the day. And as Sabre sang so beautifully earlier, just breathing it in, breathing it out in total freedom. We dance the dance of life. And we say, thank you, Father, Mother, God in the nature of the Christ, and so it is. Amen.